Good day and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel. And today's topic of discussion is reversing motor starters with interlocks. Our objective is to take a look at reversing motor starters with interlocks. We'll discuss how paired contactors allow selective reversal of a three-phase AC industrial motor and how mechanical, electrical, and push-button interlocks prevent phase-to-phase -phase contact. This lecture operates under the assumption you've watched the rotating magnetic field, manual motor starters, and two and three wire magnetic motor starters lectures, all available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet, or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. As you'll recall, applied phase sequence dictates the directional rotation of an industrial three phase AC motor. Let's say a motor rotates clockwise when phase sequence seen at the motor terminals is L1, L2, and L3. If any two leads are exchanged, the motor will rotate counterclockwise. Customarily, L1 is exchanged with L2. However, L2 could be exchanged with L3, or L3 could be exchanged with L1. Regardless, applied phase sequence would be opposite to previously, and the motor would rotate counterclockwise. Recall that a manual reversing motor starter accomplishes reversal of rotational direction with the aid of a drum or cam switch. The manual motor starter consists of contacts and an overload manually actuated by an operator at the point of use. The contactor serves as the means of starting or stopping the motor by making or breaking an electrical connection, and the overload serves to protect the motor from sustained overload conditions. The purpose of the drum switch is to swap applied phase sequence only. This method, while appropriate for some applications, is clunky and inelegant and that the motor starter only must be used to make or break connections, not the drum switch. Drum switches are ordinarily not rated to make inrush current nor break full load current. An operator must be trained in its proper use. Additionally, as the name implies, a manual motor starter is for applications manually controlled by an operator at the point of use, limiting its applicability to situations necessitating nearly constant human supervision. It is for this reason magnetic reversing motor starters are employed. A magnetic reversing motor starter uses paired contactors to selectively energize a motor rather than a drum switch. In this case, the manual motor starter MS serves to disconnect the magnetic reversing motor starter for repair and services. One of the contactors is designated the F or forward contactor and is wired such the applied phase sequence is L1, L2, L3 seen by the motor when the forward primary contacts close. Let's say that this would see the motor rotate in the clockwise direction. The other contactor is designated the R or reversing contactor and is wired such that the applied phase sequence seen by the motor is L2, L1, L3. When the reversing contactor is closed, this would see the motor rotate in the counterclockwise direction. Note the overload services both the forward and reversing contactor. Regardless of which contactor is closed, the overload elements in series can sense incoming current. An overload in the forward mode is equally relevant to an overload in the reverse mode. Importantly, the simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactor is something that should never, ever occur. Not only does it not make sense to spin a motor both clockwise and counterclockwise, the simultaneous closure of the forward and reversing contactors is a phase-to-phase -phase event where phase one and two run headlong into each other with no current controlling element between. A phase-to-phase -phase event is characterized by an arc flash event hotter than the sun and a lab instructor's rage hotter than 10,000 suns. Never ever go phase to phase. We'll discuss three common interlock methods used to prevent this occurrence in a moment. The pilot ladder logic diagram for a magnetic reversing motor starter features an e-stop in series with a normally closed stop push button. The remainder of rung one and spilling over into rung two is a traditional three wire control circuit used to control the forward contactor. Note the momentary normally open forward push button has a holding contact, F1, associated with a forward contactor and parallel to it in rung two. Rung three and spilling over into rung four 
is another traditional three-wire control circuit used to control the reversing contactor. Note the momentary normally open reverse push button has a holding contact, R1, associated with the reversing contactor in parallel to it in rung 4. Note the normally closed overload pilot contact in rung 1 serves to protect the motor from sustained overloads in both forward or reverse mode. Let's walk through the ladder logic diagram and see how this magnetic reversing motor starter works. If an operator were to press the forward push button, the momentary normally open forward switch would close. And via the normally closed e-stop, the normally closed stop, the now closed forward button, and the normally closed overload contact, the F coil of the forward contactor would be energized. When the coil of the F contactor energizes, its associated contacts change states. The normally open F1 holding contact in parallel with a forward push button closes, and the primary F contacts close. Note applied phase sequence as provided by the forward contactor is L1, L2, L3. The motor experiences inrush current and begins rotating clockwise. Once the motor reaches rated speed, the inrush current subsides and levels out to the full load rated current. If an operator were to release the momentary contact forward button, the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed F1 holding contact maintains the energized state of the F contactor coil. This means the primary F contactor stays closed and the motor continues spinning in the clockwise direction. That's the point of the holding circuit. It maintains the last asserted state. To stop the motor, an operator must press the Norma Close Stop Push button. The now open stop de-energizes the F coil and the associated contacts return to their de-energized state. The F1 holding contact opens removing the path in parallel to the forward push button. The F primary contacts open and the motor free spins to a halt. The release of the stop button returns this reversing motor starter back to the ready state. Similarly, if an operator were to press the reverse push button, the momentary normally open reverse switch would close. And via the normally closed e-stop, the normally closed stop, the now closed reverse button, and the normally closed overload contact, the R coil of the reversing contactor would be energized. When the coil of the R contactor energizes, its associated contacts change states. The normally open R1 holding contact in parallel with the reverse button closes, and the primary R contacts close. Note the applied phase sequence as provided by the reversing contactor is L2, L1, L3. The motor experiences inrush current and begins rotating counterclockwise. Once the motor reaches rated speed, the inrush current subsides and levels out at the full load rated current. If an operator were to release the momentary contact reverse button, the spring return would return it to its normally open deactivated state. Note that the now closed R1 holding contact maintains the energized state of the R contactor coil. This means the primary R contactor stays closed and the motor continues spinning in the counterclockwise direction. That's the point of the holding circuit. It maintains the last asserted state. To stop the motor, an operator must again press the normally closed stop button. The now open stop de-energizes the R coil and the associated contacts return to their de-energized state. The R1 holding contact opens removing the path in parallel to the reverse push button. The R contact or primary contacts open and the motor free spins to a halt. Once the stop button returns to its normally closed deactivated state, this reversing motor starter returns to the ready state. Notice while in its natural deactivated closed state, the maintained contact e-stop in no way, shape or form affects functionality of the system. When an operator presses and releases forward, the motor spins clockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops, ready to initiate another start cycle. When an operator presses and releases reverse, the motor spins counterclockwise. When an operator presses and releases stop, the motor stops, ready to initiate yet another start cycle. If, however, an operator were to observe an unsafe scenario, by hitting the maintained e-stop, the motor would stop, 
and the system would be disabled. Importantly, due to the maintained rather than momentary nature of the e-stop, the system will remain disabled until the e-stop is reset. Neither the forward nor the reverse button will energize either contact or coil, and as such, the primary contacts will not close despite repeated attempts to do so. That's the point. The maintained e-stop has disabled the system. Only after the e-stop has been reset and returned to the closed position can the system now start the motor. Similarly, notice the normally closed overload contact serves to protect the motor from sustained overload conditions in both forward and reverse mode. In the ready or go state, the normally closed overload contact in no way, shape, or form affects the functionality of the system. If, however, the motor experiences sustained overload, the normally closed overload contact would open and de-energize either contact or coil regardless of rotational direction. Only when the overload has cooled and reset will the ladder logic diagram allow an operator to start the motor.